Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Maths Channel. Um, I'm now going to go through question number six from the Pure Mathematics P3 October 2022 um, International A-Level exam. And this question here is about trigonometry and differentiation. And here we're given a function y equals 2 plus 3 sine x over cosine x plus sine x. And we have to show that dy dx is given by the expression here given. Um, so here we have a clear example of using the quotient rule. We have a numerator and a denominator, two separate functions, which are divided. So we're going to use the quotient rule to solve this problem. So what we do is the numerator, we call it u. So that's 2, two plus 3 sine x. And the denominator, we call it v. That's cosine x plus sine x. So the first step for us is to differentiate each of these expressions. So you've got the differential of 2 plus 3 sine x will give you just 3 cosine x. When you differentiate uh, cosine x, you get minus sine x plus the differential of sine x, which is cosine x. So we've now differentiated both the numerator and the denominator. Now we're going to apply the quotient rule. So dy dx. Now, the way I like to set it out, u on the right, on the left, v on the right, underneath u, right, u dash, underneath v, right, v dash. Um, for the quotient rule, you have to be careful about your order. So it's always v times u dash. So you're going to have cosine x plus sine x times 3 cosine x. So I'll write the 3 cosine x first, and then bracket times cosine x plus sine x, minus, then the other two multiplied. So you're going to have 2 plus 3 sine x multiplied by minus sine x plus cosine x. I'll just write that the other way around so it looks a bit more neat. Cosine x minus sine x. And then you divide all of that by the square of v. And v is cosine x plus sine x. So it's cosine x plus sine x, but all of that squared. All right, so now we have to show that this takes the form of a tan x plus b secant x plus c over secant x plus 2 sine x. So at the moment, it looks nothing like that. So let's just expand the brackets and simplify whatever we can simplify and hopefully in the end it should work out so now let's expand the bracket so you have three cosine x times cosine x which is three cosine squared x and three cosine x times sine x which is three times sine x cosine x and then i'm going to leave this minus sign and i'm going to expand this second bracket inside its own bracket to just take care of the signs, but negative and positive signs, something where if you mess up on this in a question like that, it's going to mess up your whole answer. So let's keep safe, keep the minus sign outside, open a new bracket, expand the whole of that, those two brackets in this one bracket. So you have two times cosine x and two times a minus sine x, which is minus two sine x. And then three times sine x times cosine x, so three sine x cosine x. Then we have 3 sine x times minus sine x, which is plus 3 sine squared x. Okay, in fact, it's minus 3 sine squared x. Be careful. You're going to have 3 sine x times minus x, which is minus 3 sine squared x. Okay, so now that's all over. Cosine x plus sine x all squared. What I'll do, I'll, I'll also square that. That's cosine squared x plus 2 cosine x sine x plus sine squared x, because I think that might also be needed to be uh, um, simplified. So I'll expand that also. So I've got this here, what the form that I need it to be in. So we can just have a look, see how we're doing. What I'm going to do next, I'm going to just get rid of this bracket on the top now by multiplying everything by minus 1. So 3 cosine squared x plus 3 sine x cosine x minus 2 cosine x plus 2 sine x. 
and then you're going to have minus 3 sine x cosine x and plus 3 sine squared x all of that over I'm going to do I'll write these two together I'll write the sine squared x plus the cosine squared x together and then I got plus 2 sine x cosine x that's that part there right now um, I can see a few things that, that will work out now like the 3 sine x cosine x and the minus 3 sine x cosine x they will cancel out all right and then I've got 3 sine squared x plus 3 cosine squared x that will also simplify 3 sine squared x plus 3 cosine squared x and I've got minus 2 cosine x and plus 2 sine x over and here the sine squared x plus cosine squared x I'm going to put that as 1 1 plus 2 sine x cosine x all right now I think um, it's getting a bit clearer now so we have dy dx equals so here I can take out 3 as a common factor I'm left with sine squared x plus cosine squared x inside the bracket now that's going to give me 1 that part then I've got minus 2 cosine x plus 2 sine x and all of that over 1 plus 2 sine x cosine x so now sine x squared plus cosine x squared x is going to be 1 so that's going to be 3 times 1 so you'll have now here 1 minus 2 cosine x plus 2 sine x over 1 plus 2 sine x cosine x now i'm going to look at the form of our answer so i've got that little bit copied so i can just compare them next to each other so still they don't look anything like each other but i can see now how this will work because i need to have a tan x and a sec x and a constant on the numerator and the denominator i have to have a secant x and sine x so we can see here if i if I look at the denominator, if I divide the denominator by cosine x, and of course I'll have to do the same with the numerator, then it looks like it's going to work out because 1 divided by cosine x is secant x, which is what we need, and 2 sine x cosine x divided by cosine x, the cosine x will disappear and you're left with 2 sine x, and that's exactly what we need in the denominator, that's exactly what it is. So if we divide by cosine x, we get exactly what they've given us in the denominator, secant x plus 2 sine x and in the numerator if i'm all, if i divide 1 by cosine x i get secant x which is one of the things i need so i've got secant x and i have in fact that's supposed to be a 3 here eh? that's supposed to be a 3 because that's 3 times 1 so that's 3 so that's 3 secant x and if i divide this term by secant x, by cosine x i get minus 2 the cosine x disappears it cancels out and then I've got 2 sine x divided by cosine x, which is plus 2 tan x. Okay, so here that was meant to be a 3, as I mentioned. That's 3 times 1, so that's 3. Now, what we see here in the end is we can just rewrite it in this form. So I'll put the tan x term first, so it's going to be 2 tan x. Then I'll put the secant x term plus 3 secant x. And then the constant, which is minus 2 over the denominator which is secant x plus 2 sine x so we've ended up getting exactly what they wanted us to get it's just now we know that the constant a is 2 and b is 3 and c is negative 2. so even though when we first differentiated it looked completely different from what we are supposed to show it as just simplifying it many terms cancelled out the sine squared and cosine squared x's became one and then we just had to look at the form of the answer so how do we for example how do we how does one become secant x if you look at the denominator how does one become secant x well we divide by cosine x and that causes the other term also to become exactly how you want it so sometimes you can't see you know exactly how to get the answer you know kind of directly but if you just look at, for example, one part of it, like the 1, how does that become secant x? 
and see does that work if I divide all the other terms by cosine x as well and it and it does so there's a bit of uh, you know thought and maybe sometimes a bit of um, ex you know trial and error involved but most of the time you can make an educated guess to find how to get the form of the answer all right so there we have the answer to question number six um, other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist that will appear in the top right over here. Other questions from differentiation from P3 will be found in the playlist in this area. And you can subscribe to the channel by clicking on the link in the middle. Thank you for watching and see you soon.